remember clearly when this song came out. I was probably about 10 years old or something, and I recorded it onto, recorded it onto a little monophonic tape recorder, the ones with the little speaker inbuilt, and I would listen to this over and over again. I remember listening under the bedclothes when I was supposed to be sleeping during the night. I asked my parents to get me the sheet music because I couldn't play by ear at the time. This was one of the very first songs I figured out on piano, one of the first pop songs. Had a huge influence on me. We'd never heard anything like this in the charts before. And it's hard to talk and play at the same time. So yeah, what we are looking at today then is our friend's electric Gary Newman with his Tubeway Army Band, of course. So let's play the main riff. There are four sections to this, a first section, second, third, fourth. So we'll go through those quickly right now for you. I'm going to try not to linger as long on these songs to make it a little bit snappier. Our friend's electric, I play it like this. You can play, just shift down an octave. do this. You can thicken it up like this. So that's the main riff. Then we have the second section which goes like this. fumbling around. So the second part there was just, I'm embellishing it a little bit with some extra notes. So it should be like this. That's its most basic form, just playing a power chord with the left hand. You can add extra notes like this. That's how it was on my piano sheet music, but not particularly true to the original where they just play single notes. But this sounds quite nice as well. And we come to this section here, the third section, which Gary raps over. Yeah, the guy was really ahead of his time. This was 1978 or 1979, something like this. And he was rapping over this track. Shifting around the octaves here. Let's do that. So this was a synthesizer riff that was being played. So now I'm alone. Now I can think for myself. About little deals and issues. The things that I just don't understand. And then we come into the triumphant sort of chorus section that's just played on the synthesizers. It goes like this. Uh, get the right octave. Using a bit of sustain pedal. And back into the main riff. Let's try using sustain. Yeah, if you were to play this on a synthesizer, of course, you'd get a lot of help from the synth patches where you would have some sustain built in so the notes would really ring out. But there you have it, our friends Electric. What an epic tune from an iconic pioneer of electronic music, Gary Newman. Respect. Here's an interesting tune. I don't know if Def Leppard were a popular band in the States. This is Animal, which was one of their big hits in the UK. I've kind of always loved this song. It's a obviously a rock song, works best on guitar, but this is quite an interesting thing to do on piano because you can play around with power chords. So I'll demonstrate that for you uh, right now. 
always a bit unsure what octave to start in. That's the introduction, something along those lines, just playing nice spread apart chords, kind of avoiding the major third or the minor third. See, I'm not playing the D there. Briefly, I'm playing it for the C. This is the intro. Steps up. to the verse, which is the same. Let's just... Uh, da -da. Of a stony ground Speed it up. And there's a last for life The circus comes to town interesting key change. power chords. And you've got that iconic guitar solo. Let's play it down here. But that is actually a lot of fun to play. I hope this was a pop song or a hit song in the US as well. Otherwise, this will mean nothing for the vast majority of my US viewers. So apologize for that. Now we're going to get on to a song that everybody knows all around the world. Okay, I probably only need to play four notes of the main riff and you will all recognize this. It's probably enough, just three notes. Yeah, we are in the letter A, of course, the category today. So this is Axel F, which I have here. It's in three sections. The first, the main section. Then there's a part with lots of fast chords uh, that I'll demonstrate for you how I try and play it. The third part is the section with all the like DX7 sound bell sounds in the middle, which is really pretty. Really nice chords, actually. What an epic song. Everybody knows this. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the youth of today might uh, know this from the crazy frog version that's uh, diabolical. We're going to stick to the original. So the main riff goes something like this. And I'm playing everything in the correct key today, the key that it was recorded in. Just checking the MIDI is recording, it is. Sorry, I'll start again. It falls quite nicely under the fingers in the key of F minor here. The bass line is also a really important part of this song, so let me play uh, my interpretation of it. It might not be exactly note for note correct. Should we do it an octave up?
There's a pitch bend there, which doesn't work on this piano. One more time, it's fun. So play this. <laughs> so I can barely play that with one hand. Of course, this would have been sequenced and quantized and everything for the original track. Or maybe not quantized, this was recorded on tape. No DAWs at this particular time, of course. But I thought it would be impossible to play the lead and the bass together at the same time. But I can almost do it. I think with a bit of practice, I would be able to nail this. So I'm going to have a go for you right now. Let's see how we get on. Take it slowly. I missed the keys. One more time. So I can just about do it there. I thought that was impossible. I never thought I'd be able to do that, but... Okay, then we have the middle section here. The bass line stays the same, but we have some interesting chords going on here. And this, for me, is impossible to play together with a bass line. So I'll do it separately. This repeats. And we've got this interesting chord. Let's go something like that. It's a really nice chord, actually. Fourths. So I can have a go at putting the two hands together, but I know I will fail. This will need a lot of practice. Interesting. Yeah, that's a fun challenge. I might work on that. I think, again, with a bit of practice, I might be able to do it. But then we move on after the second section there. I think we go back into the lead. And then we're into this third section eventually, which is really pretty. This has the sort of bell sounds, something like this. Play it up here. And then Jan Hammer, it is Jan Hammer, isn't it, that did this? No, Harold Fortemeyer adds uh, parts on top of this. Back into the. Oh, sorry, sorry. And that is basically the entirety of the song. It just repeats in different parts. But uh, yeah, I would encourage you to have a go at this. We can all play the melody line, I think, but see if you can put it together. With the bass, it's uh, hugely challenging, but it feels very satisfying when you almost get it together. This is something I'll work on in the future. <laughs> 